Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us talk about coordination in various life forms. So now we already had studied a lesson in class 9 that is diversity in living organisms, right? We, we, in that lesson we saw how many varieties of life forms exist on this earth starting from the simple unicellular organisms to the most complex multicellular organisms. So there are a variety of life forms which exist. So we will see how this coordination between the different organs happen between different type of life forms. So let us broadly talk about animals and plants now. So however we know that even under animals that means the animalia kingdom we have so many variety of life forms right we have the cylindrates we have the echinoderms we have the mollusks we have the vertebrates so we have so many different types of life forms but broadly we will talk about now that how this coordination happens in animals so let us take the example of human beings just now I mentioned about one scenario that what would what do you think would happen if you see a tiger? As soon as you see a tiger, you start running. So what actually happened? Who actually saw the tiger? Which body part of yours actually saw the tiger? It was your eyes. So your eyes saw the tiger. Now who interpreted that it is a tiger? Like for example, our eyes see so many things. We see chair, table, tiger, monkey birds so who actually interprets who is actually the deciding organ of our body it is our brain so as soon as our eyes saw the tiger brain interpreted that it is a tiger right so then what happens then it is our brain which decides that we should run so this decision is also taken by the brain right so that decision in, is this information is then communicated to the muscles and then the muscles do their job that is the muscles start running and that is how we run so what is happening here the information is getting communicated to the different parts of the body right so now the question is how this communication actually takes place so for this we have the nervous system like how we have we have spoken about digestive system we have excretory system which talks about how we get rid of the waste materials of the body we have the respiratory system which talks about how we exchange gases so the nervous system is the one which talks about how the information is communicated between different parts of the body so in animals electric impulses are used to carry such information now you might be thinking now from where do these electric impulses come so we will discuss this in detail when we de detail when we have a detailed discussion on the nervous system so for now i'm just giving you an idea that what all are we going to cover in this lesson so this nervous system is going to talk about the transmission of the information with the help of the nerve cells so we have spoken about nervous tissue in one of our previous lessons right so in this nervous system, the transmission is very fast. That means the impulses moves very rapidly. So the information is carried from one part of the body to the other part extremely fast. But there are certain limitations of the nervous system. So what are the limitations of the nervous system? The limitation is that it can reach only the cells which are connected by nervous tissue because electric impulse is something which is related only to the nerve cells so that is why they cannot reach all cells of the body so only the nerve cells it can reach so that is one limitation that means all cells of the body cannot be communicated with the information the second limitation is that electric impulses cannot be continuously created and transmitted so now why do we have the first limitation that's because only the nerve cells have specialized detectors who can detect this electrical impulse right so now other cells do not have those detectors so they cannot detect the electric impulse so that is one limitation the next limitation is that let us suppose that once an electric impulse is generated it got transmitted now the cells would need some time to generate another impulse again 
right? So there would be a time lag between the two impulses which are getting generated. But there are certain scenarios where we do not want any time lag. We want the information to be transmitted continuously. Let us suppose when we talk of growth. So when a person grows, what happens? Cells in all parts of the body grow, right? So that means the information should reach all the cells. So in those scenarios, these kind of electric impulses will not be much helpful. So we need an alternative. So here you can look at the picture of a nervous system. So you can look at these blue colored nerves. So many nerves running all around the body, right? But even then they have a limitation that they are not actually reaching each and every cell of the body. So what is the other alternative? So the other alternative was the endocrine system. So the name might be quite tacky at the beginning but as we go ahead you'll get used to it. So what happens in this system? So then it was thought that if instead of this concept of electric impulse how would how would it be if the cells release some chemicals? So the cells that is the excited cells what are those excited cells that means the cells which are actually seeing the change for example in, in the tiger example which body part actually first saw the tiger it was the eyes so the eye is a sense organ so it can sense the external things so as soon as so the, the cells of the eye are nothing but this stimulated cells are the excited cells that is they saw something new they saw something different so they are the excited cells so before what was happening so these excited cells were generating some electric impulse in case of nervous system but because of the limitations of the nervous system so people thought, how would it be if these cells, instead of producing electric impulse, if they release some chemicals, then these chemicals, what would happen? The chemical will diffuse around that particular cell and then the other cells of the body will have some method by which they will detect the presence of these chemicals and that is how they can recognize the chemical or they can recognize the information. And that is how the information can be transmitted to all cells of the body. But in this case, the process will be slower because a chemical will be released and the chemical will diffuse around very gradually. Then the other cells will recognize the chemical that will also happen very gradually. So overall, the transmission will be very slow. But what are the advantages in this case? In this case, the advantage is that it can reach all cells because there is no limitation of nervous tissue here. So all kinds of tissues will be able to recognize the chemicals and it is also a continuous process because there is no time lag involved. So once the chemicals are released, so they will diffuse around. So there is no time lag in the generation of that chemicals because the chemicals will get released continuously. So this will be a continuous process, right? So what are these chemicals which we are talking about? So these chemicals which we are talking about in the endocrine systems are nothing but hormones. So again a new name I guess for you. So we will study about the different hormones which are present in our body, how these hormones are produced, what do they do once they are produced. So we will talk about hormones in detail as we go ahead. So this nervous system and endocrine system. So nervous system is something which is common to all animals but again the kind of nervous system which they have differs. For example if we look at the lower animals like the porifera, the sponges, they have got very simple structure so they do not have a nervous system at all. Now as we go a little higher maybe to the cylindrates or the platyhelminths so there we will see that the nervous system is present but it is very simple not very complex and advanced nervous system. But as we gradually go higher, as we go to more complex multicellular organisms, we see that even the nervous system is also very advanced and very complex. So here in this lesson, I will talk about the nervous system of all the classes of Animalia Kingdom, but not in much detail. But we will talk about the human nervous system and the human endocrine system in detail. Because human beings are complex multicellular organisms. So if you are able to understand the concept of the nervous system and endocrine system of human beings, you will get an idea of what the nervous system does and what the endocrine system does. So that is our agenda as far as 
animals are concerned. So we will talk about the nervous system for the lower animals and human beings. We will also talk about the endocrine system of human beings. Right? So now let us look at the coordination in case of plants. So what happens in plants? So when we were talking about the lesson on tissues, we have spoken about the different types of plant tissues also. So there we saw that plants do not have any specialized muscular tissue or nervous tissue. Now muscular tissue is present in human beings, in animals because animals move from one place to another. So there is a lot of movement involved in the life of animals. But plants are generally immobile and they do not move from one place to another, right? So the movement part is less and that is why they do not have specialized muscular or nervous tissue. Now, if they do not have this nervous tissue, that means there is no nervous system in plants. So how coordination will happen in plants? So in plants, the coordination mainly happens by chemicals. Like in human beings, the coordination happens both by nervous tissue as well as chemicals. But in plants, it mainly happens by chemicals. Now you might ask that plants don't move much. So what is the role of these chemicals also? I mean, there, there are no movements seen. So what are those things for which this coordination is needed? See, even though the plants do not move from one place to another, but still we observe movements related to growth. For example, the way we see a person grow from a small child to an adult human being. Similarly, we see a plant also growing from a seed. First it is just a seed and then it, it forms a seedling, then a small plant and then the same small plant grows into a big tree. So that means the parts of the plant are increasing in height, increasing in width, the number of leaves are increasing, size of the leaves are increasing. So the growth is taking place, right? That means there is something happening inside the plant body which is actually asking it to grow. So for that also, communication needs to be sent to each and every cell of the plant because only when the cell divides, that is only when the number of cells increase or the size of the cells increase, only then there is a growth. Either the number of cells should increase or the size of the cells should increase. So that means the communication needs to reach each and every cell that it is time to grow. Only then the plant will grow. So that communication happens in plants mainly by chemicals and these chemicals are again called hormones and they are known as plant hormones or phytohormones. So we will talk about the coordination in plants also in detail as we go ahead with the lesson. So I think with this you got some idea that what exactly are we going to study in this lesson in control and coordination. Clear? So now with this idea in mind let us go ahead and let us start discussing about the animals part first. So coordination in different animals. So when I say different animals, you can just have a look. So what a big variety of animals we have. Whether we talk about these small bacteria, fungi or the protozoa or the small worms, or the cylindrates like hydra or the variety of animals starting from dog, monkey, goat, elephant or the marine animals like octopus, fishes, crab, the insects or the human beings. So we have got a wide range of living organisms, right? So when we talk of animals, then also we have so many different types of animals. So here in this part, we will talk about so we are not talking about plants now. We will first talk only about the animals. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.